kept from him? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing. For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For he pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. For those of you who have your Bibles or you're taking notes, go to read one scripture, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Micah chapter 6, the eighth verse. He that showed thee, O man, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. That's a question mark. We're going to rest there and talk about God's instruction for godliness. Father, we, we come now. Knowing that you're God all by yourself. This cannot be done except by the, whole, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Father, you speak to your people. You interpret to your people. You keep all the glory. For I understand I'm just a vessel in your hand. That cannot take credit for what you're cooking. Thank you, Father, for blessing us all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. This morning, as we quickly transition into afternoon, don't forget we have a three o'clock service. We are going to start on time. Uh, Pastor Brown, Dr. Brown from Agape in Indiana drove up here this morning, so he's in town. Reverend Wilson from First Baptist will be here. Bishop Lloyd from Fisher Street will be here also. Amen. Amen. So be in prayer as we unpack this word. So Micah is a prophet. We call them a minor prophet. Minor doesn't mean he's not called of God. It just means they didn't write that much. So they wrote the few things that were able to write. So we call them a minor prophet. Doesn't mean God don't use them like he used Isaiah, Jeremiah, or uh, the rest of them. Just means they didn't commit too much to writing. Nonetheless, their words are important. So the children of Israel are getting up, they get the commandments and the obedience of God all messed up. So he speaks in this cha sixth chapter. He said, I need you to be godly. And you wonder, how do I need to be godly? And then he says, let me tell you what God says. God said, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. Hmm. He has also told you what he requires of you to be godly. So what are those things he says to do justly? To do the right things. To love mercy, because without mercy, if you are not merciful, you can't obtain mercy. And to walk. Oh, oh. To walk. It doesn't say to sit. To walk, but humbly with your God. Now, now, let's unpack this. To walk means I don't stand still. Number two, I have to walk with humility. What does humility mean? I take directions from him. I'm never at an arrival point when I'm walking with God. Anytime I decide I don't want to do it the way he wants, I'm not walking humbly with him. I'm walking in pride. So he says, <laughs> what is good? So what is good? Matthew 19, 17 says this. He says, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? They're calling Jesus good. We're trying to define what good is. So hear me and hear me well. He says, There is none good but one. 
That is God. That if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. So if I keep the commandments, I am in God. If I violate any of the commandments, I'm outside of God. So I'm not doing good. <laughs> that means whatever God has told me not to do, and I decide to do it, I'm not doing good. Psalm 100 verse 5. Bible says, for the Lord is good. <laughs> his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Trying to help somebody here this morning. No matter what they tell you, the Bible is the most relevant book in the whole world. The Bible is still the best seller, even though we have electronic gadgets. I couldn't tell you how many Bibles I have. I couldn't tell you, because every one they come out with, I want it. The bride makes sure I get it. So the Bible is still the best seller in the world. Why is it the best seller when most people challenge your God? Because the answer is in it. And they don't want you to know they know. So what is good? Man. The things that God has spoken into your life is only written in the Bible. Because you have tested it, that's why you keep going back. Even though they won't tell you. The only true result you will ever have in life, my goodness, is if you obey the Bible and the results will come to you, not somebody else. If you decide not to obey, you also see the result. It matters not what the crowd said. <laughs> Can I tell you this? You can quote me on this one. The crowd has never been right one time in the Bible. Not one time. God is always right. Do you know why? Because he's good all the time. Mm. He knows the right way to do things to get the right results. So when the man next to you or the woman next to you say, oh, you don't have to do all of that, watch them. They're about to crash and they're taking you with them. Mm. Let me move on. In Isaiah 5.20, the Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good. <laughs> and good evil. That put darkness for light. And light for darkness, that put bitterness for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Perversion. Here's what perversion means. I know the truth, but I don't say it's the truth. The only way you pervert the truth is if you think you're more superior to God. That means you can't be taught. Hmm. There is no new truth about the scriptures. What the scripture says is what the scripture does. No one, the Bible says, who has spoken and it came to pass when the Lord hasn't spoken. Eh. So what is just? What is the right thing to do? He said, what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly. Justly means to do the right thing. Deuteronomy 6.18 Thou shalt do the good and right thing in the sight of the Lord, that he may be well with you, not with me. Someone get this, get this. He says, and thou shalt do which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Don't wait for my approval. <laughs> if it's not right, and good in the sight of the Lord, you are wasting your time. I don't care what it is. Now, <laughs> he says that it may be well with you. So if you don't do it the right way for God, it won't be right with you. So the area you are struggling, 
check what you're doing in that area. The area that is hurting you, check what you're doing in that area. Is it right before God? Or is everybody in the crowd telling you, oh yeah, that's the way to do it. That, don't, don't do it any other way. Have you read it in the Bible that tells you that's the way to do it? If it is, hold God responsible. He'll fix it. <laughs> he says, <laughs> and that thou mayest go, when you do it right by God, then you can go and possess the good land. There's a land for you. Sometimes it's not physical land. It's a territory in the gift he gave you. But if you don't do the right thing, you will never possess it. You will always struggle with the thing God is already giving you because you don't line up with him. Do the right thing. In James 4.17, the Bible said, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and does it not, to him it is sin. And we know the wages of sin is death. That thing you are doing, that you know is not right with God, quit it. He allows you to, I was, I was teaching Sunday school this morning, the highway to hell is big, it's wide. You take 12 lanes going one way. To heaven is steps, not a highway. You can drive into heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Your driver license can't get you into heaven. Your steps will. And steps require that I'm careful how I place one foot in front of the other. Uh, let me go on. So the thing he has told you not to do, quit it. The thing you've heard us preach from the altar that you have read in the Bible, the Bible God said not to do, because he told you you are not responsible for it. Every time you do it, you put a nail in your coffin. I'm not trying to scare you. The Bible Look at this, James 1.22. Do the right thing. James 1.22. He said, be ye doers of the word. Do the word. Do the word. Do the word. Do the word. That is the only thing that's going to bring you success. Do the word. He says, <laughs> be ye doers of the word not hearers only now watch this, watch this deceiving your own selves mm. so you are doing abracadabra and God is looking and saying what is he doing yeah Lord I'm, okay when you get done let me know the blessings are over there you, you over there fooling yourself be ye doers of the word that's doing the right thing now, <laughs> the very things that seem like you can't put down is the very things that God is going to use to promote you. Example before I go on. Jesus was born of a Virgin Mary. He came to save the world. He lived until he was 30, eating and drinking like you and I. Now hear me. For him to get to the place of his calling and anointing, he had to go into the wilderness driven by the Holy Spirit to be tempted. Whew. So he didn't eat for 40 days. Someone get this, get this, get this. He was Hunger, the Bible says, with the angels standing there, Satan came to him. Y'all don't hear me. For every promotion, there has to be a test. If you don't pass the test, repeat. So, with the angels standing by in Matthew chapter 4, Satan said, if you are the son of God, Convert this stone to be bread. He was hungry, we are told. But because he had been in the scriptures while in the wilderness, he said, 
The word said, as hungry as he was, the easiest thing for him to do is to have some bread. God, don't hear me. But he said, just because I'm hungry in the flesh, I'm hungrier in the spirit. Amen. Uh, The Bible records three questions. We're going to question them today. It's going to be more than three questions, though. Three questions, and he answered them scripturally. Check them out. All his answers came from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. The Bible says, and Satan left him for a season. And his fame, oh my goodness, his fame went all over the region. Same Jesus. Because he had to be tested in his affliction. I wish someone would get this. I wish someone would get this. The thing that is holding you hostage is the same thing God is going to promote you with. Do the right thing. He says to love mercy. <laughs> Jesus. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. The Bible says put on therefore. <laughs> so the thing that the enemy is holding me hostage in, I can take him off. Pastor, how do you know? He says, put on. <laughs> so if I can put on, I can put off. Hmm. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, you don't need to go there. He said, in a great house are vessels. Clay, silver, gold, but whichever one projects itself sets themselves ready for the master's use. Mm. So put on, therefore, <laughs> as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. You know, the Bible tells us to be careful not to take offense. They call you your name. You take offense because they didn't put the title. When you go to the grave, there's no title in the grave. Title is for earth. It don't mean nothing. So when I put on <laughs> mercies, that means the thing that offends others, I'll be careful not to be offended by it. Now don't hear me. Because you offend God every day. The things you put your mouth on, you have no business. Would you like him to remind you how many there are? <laughs> but they offended you 20 years ago, you are still mad. Matthew 5, 7. Among the Beatitudes, the Bible says this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So if I'm not merciful, I don't expect mercy. Mm. Trying to help you here. This is December. We celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. But we don't fully understand who he is. We need to be godly. Some of these things we need to put far from us. Look, nobody has to approve your godliness. Let me say that again. Nobody has to approve your godliness except God. God is the only one that has the capacity to bless you where you are. So you are doing something to impress everybody and they have no hell or heaven to put you in. God is the only one that has the red pen to check your godliness. Are you at 2% or are you at 80%? At 80%, he'll help you. At 2% and you're turning the other way, okay. Why? Because he gave you free will. Hmm. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 2. Let me hurry up, the preachers are preaching now. From the pews. They must be hard. 
<laughs> what does God, what does loving mercy look like? The third scripture is Ephesians 2, 4 and 5. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Now, I want you to see this. Even when we were dead in sins, not one, sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. So, while I was purposely offending God, We think we have to give somebody a piece of our mind. We forget we offended God two minutes ago. And he said he raised you up with Christ. In Ephesians the same 2, 6, he said we are seated far above principalities and powers. The things we wrestle with down here in chapter 6, principalities and powers. So how do we walk humbly with God? I'm almost done. I want you to remember this. Pride is a direct opposition of God. Let me say that again. Pride says, God, you can't teach me anything. Pride says what Satan said. I'm prettier than God. I got more gifts than God. I look better than God. So I need to take God's throne so God can't tell me anything. Can I tell you what the Bible says also? In James 4, 6, the Bible says, God resists. The proud. He gives grace to the humble. Another transmission says this. God sets himself against the proud. God sets himself against the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. The proud is unteachable. The humble is the teachable. No matter where you have gotten in life, you are not at the highest point. God can still show you the, the next level. But if you are too proud, you think you have arrived. He will set himself against you. Hello? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Walking humbly with God. Number one, he said humbly. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We know what faith is. Faith is believing God at his word and acting as if he's already done. Then he will do it. Faith says, you believe, then you see. Mm -hmm. The flesh says, see and then do. Mm. Let me mess you up a little bit. Every time you, you do because you saw, you are bound to fail. You know that pretty man flexing his pecs? Might not be the one. That lady might not be the one. You need to ask him. Don't walk by what you see. Walk by what he has said. Number two, walking humbly before God. Deuteronomy 5.33. The Bible says, We shall walk in all the ways in which the Lord your God has commanded you. That ye may live, that he may be well with you, that he may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. God said in Genesis 6 3 hmm, that his spirit shall not contend with the spirit of man, that he gives man a hundred and twenty years. That's what God said. But for you to get to 120 years, you have to live it the way he has prescribed it. Some of us think we are big and bad enough to do what we want to do. 
smoking, drinking excessive, anything in excess is poisonous. <laughs> Everything in moderation, including poison. If you take it in the right quantity, it will help you instead of killing you. Y'all don't hear me. The obedience of God has a blessing for you. But if you disobey it, you heap coals upon your head. And you wonder why this is going wrong and that is going wrong. In Haggai, the Bible says this, consider your ways, 157. He says, consider your ways. You make all this money, but you look in your pocket, it's like there's holes in your pocket. You eat, you don't get full. You put clothes on, you're not warm. He said, consider your way. There is something in your hand you're not supposed to have. My goodness. Mm. Ephesians 2.10, he said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. This is work this morning. Godliness. You have to be purposeful in your work with God. Please hear me. <laughs> there is no accidental success. Because if you accidentally su succeed, you will accidentally, accidentally Lose your success. By accident you got in, by accident you get out. Listen to me. To be successful is it, never in a flash. First, it starts with the spirit. It starts in the spirit with the spirit of worship. The spirit of worship is that I know who God is <laughs> I recognize who he is and I follow it with praise. I understand that my waking up this morning was not according to my strength. I don't hear me. It is by his divine appointment that I'm up this morning. <laughs> because his plans for me today are good and not evil. But for me to receive the good Remember we said in the beginning, God is good? Hello? Is there anyone here? I said God is good. So for me to receive the good, I have to do God. Y'all don't hear me. It's simple scriptural calculation. If God is good and I want good, I have to do God. Is that hard? Okay, so how do I do God? Thou shalt not kill. Are you talking about him? You are killing his reputation. Mm -hmm. You are looking at the internet for things that you have no business looking at. He said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But you are looking at that thing. Is that man yours? Is that woman yours? So you formulate pictures in your mind. What are some of the benefits of godliness? Divine favor. Quickly. Psalm 5 verse 12. For thou, o Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. For thou, o Lord, will bless the righteous. Who is the righteous? The righteous is the one that maintains his, his her, or her innocence in the presence of temptation. Okay. Give you an example. That thing on the internet I talked about, that you looked at when nobody was looking, don't look at it when nobody else is around. You are righteous in that thing. You had the opportunity and you had liberty to do, but you didn't do it. You're righteous in that. So the Bible says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, with thou compass him as with a shield. Put him in another church, please. I'm preaching in this one. Psalm 90, verse 17, he says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. 
And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Favor. Number two, divine help. I'm going to go quickly. Number two, when I live a godly life, what are some of the benefits? Number one is divine favor. Number two is divine help. John 5, 14. Afterward, Jesus founded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. Hear me, someone. Hear me. Hear me. God will remove you from every affliction. But go back and thank him and don't go back to that thing he removed you from. Or the consequences are worse than the first time. Here's what the Bible says as I move on. He said, if you cast out an unclean spirit from a vessel, he goes about in dry places looking for where to. If he doesn't find it, he will come back to his original abode. And he'll bring seven more demons stronger than it. I don't hear me. The thing God has delivered you from, don't go back to it or he'll kill you. Because the demon don't mean you no good. Divine health. Exodus 15, 25, 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. That's not the pastor talking. Exodus 15, 26. He said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, including me. If I stop being diligent in hearkening to what he said, I'm about to go the wrong way. He says, and will do that which is right. In his sight. And will give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. Listen to this. I, this is the Lord speaking. I will put none of these diseases upon you. Which I have brought upon the Egyptian. So if I would diligently hearken to his voice. And obey every one of his commandments. Even though I'm sick now. He will bring me out of it. Godliness. Number three. Divine guidance. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou which thou should go. I will guide thee with my eye. So when you have the accosting in your hand. Do you think God is looking at you? The thing he told you not to hold, you're holding it. Do you think his eyes is on you? Mm. Listen to me. Godliness requires that I obey every commandment of God so that I can reap the benefits out of his hand. The day I lose this thing is the day he turns his face to me. But if I decide I don't want to give this up, you can have it. He gave you dominion over it. You can have it, but he's just not going to add more to you. You don't hear me. <laughs> In Psalm 73, verse 24, the Bible said, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, divine guidance, and afterward receive me to glory. So if I don't receive his counsel, that means I'm not listening to what he's saying. All of us in here, some of us have kids, some of us not yet. When you tell your child to do something, he doesn't do it. You're not happy with them. Hmm. They're asking for a sandwich. You say, did you, did you do what I asked you to do? No. Well, they go sit down somewhere. Hmm. When you do it, you come tell me. Oh you don't mind buying them the sandwich. But the last instruction, they didn't obey. Oh, my goodness. You're not going to do the next thing because they haven't obeyed the last one. Number four, divine peace. Divine peace. Psalm 91 verse 16, with long life, mm -hmm. with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Finally, divine inspiration. We know that all scripture is inspired by the word of God. 
all scripture. How many did I say? How many scriptures? How many? So all scripture is inspired by divinity. So the things you do are supposed to be inspired by God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.21 who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. Talk about Jesus. That your faith and hope might be in God. Okay? Let me do this quickly so we'll go home. The thing God has told me to do, I am not able to do by myself. But if I will ask the helper, the one Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. If I will solicit his help, the assignment he gave me is easy to him. If I will yield in his hand to be used. Yeah. Some of the things we do, someone hear me as we close. Some of the things we do, we don't even know where the thought came from. And we do it and it's successful. And you wonder, wow, whoa, did I just do that? Like Urku says, did I do that? <laughs> the reason why you ask that question is if you, are, you allow the Holy Spirit to flow. And the idea he put on your hand, you're already doing it. And it's just, whoa, what is it? But here's the problem. We think we did it. In Isaiah 42 verse 8, as I close, he says, my glory will I share with no one. Everything I do for you, I need you to return the glory to me. That you're sitting here today and the earth hasn't opened to swallow is by his grace. So give him praise in the house this morning. Thank you, Lord. So God's instructions for godliness. Do what is good. Do what it requires of you. Do justly. Love mercy and walk humbly before your God. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Amen. Amen. Godliness is a simple prescription for our blessings. Now, salvation is free. It's like someone bought you a Christmas gift, put it under the Christmas tree, gave you keys to the house. You told the person you needed a bicycle. The bicycle is under the tree, but you never ride it. The gift has already been given. Jesus already died. He already got up and went to heaven to intercede for you and I. So if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. Is there anyone here who does not know Christ as their Lord and their Savior? Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in Revelation 3.20, The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Amen. Now, the second call is, is there anyone here who's not a member who wants to join this body of baptized believers. If you're not a member, you are not, it doesn't mean if you're not a member, you're not going to heaven. No. Is there anyone today? Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone? Thank you, Lord. 